I've seen plenty of discourse over the years about teams choking, saying they're feeling pressured or their mindset is bad. But how many of you actually know what that means? Today, we're going to go over what mindset is, what it should ideally look like, and what steps you can take to make sure your mindset is perfect. Basically, there are two types of mindset issues. The first is how much a game or situation knocks your confidence, and the second is factors outside the game that cause you to lose confidence in your teammates. With these definitions in mind, we can see that the deciding factor in mindset is actually confidence and trust, which is why in my video on IGLing, those points are talked about a lot. The only way to solve the second type of issue is to resolve the problem. If your team has had an argument, or a player has life factors that are affecting his ability to play, then you need to solve the argument, or if your efforts to help him aren't working, bench the player until his issues are resolved. Too many times I have seen one player bring down the whole team, through no fault of his own, but not being on his A game and refusing to bench until he is again only breaks down the confidence and communication with his team. If this is your issue, discuss ways to help your player solve his issue and be there for him until it resolves itself. Don't throw away your player. Use this as an opportunity to build that synergy with him, but always prioritize the team's health as a whole. If the problem is your team has argued, get over your pride, communicate, and move on. When your issue is that your personal confidence is being affected by the game or tournament, things get a lot harder. This problem is internal. You can't change someone else's mindset, which makes this problem the hardest to coach. The usual scenario is it's a big moment in the tournament, the last day of finals, needing 10 points to qualify in the last game, etc, etc. It's easier to control if the team has been playing well and just need to keep going, but it's far harder if the day or event hasn't been going your way. Some of the best players I know struggle with this. A lot of it is down to experience. Most famous teams have enough PMGCs under their belt to not choke in this way. They're used to the pressure and have systems in place to prevent a breakdown. But most likely, you don't, and time is going to be your best ally in this experience. But there are tips that I tell my players that I believe can drastically help your mindset in the long run. I'm going to show you five ways you can de-stress, ease the pressure, and clear your head to be ready for that next game. Think of the day as just another scrim. As you move up the ranks of competition, you're going to be playing more and more with better teams. If you're aiming for or are in PMSL, I'd be expecting you to be playing at least one scrim a day with two or three tourneys per month. Instinctively, we separate the two, scrims and a big event, but that doesn't help your mindset. If you're used to playing scrims and play with these same teams regularly, then your mindset shouldn't change whether it's a practice tournament or PMSL qualifiers. Keep your head down, play the game your team has been playing, and ignore the temptation to turn this event into a big thing. You're not going to win. This is what I said to 7th Element when we qualified for SAC Fall in 2023. When I joined the team, they had been in SAC Spring before, but had finished in last place. I want to stress the point that by obsessing over an unrealistic goal, they were automatically putting too much pressure on themselves and self-sabotaging. I'm not someone that expects my team to win every time, but I felt confident that we could reach top 7, a drastic improvement from 16th, and while winning is always nice, I didn't want them to have that expectation of themselves and have their mindset suffer if they didn't reach it. We knew we wouldn't win, and we didn't, but we play 6th and qualified for PMGC. To me, that's far better than aiming for 1st and finishing 10th. Think of each game as its own entity. Isolate every game into its own bubble, and when it's over, no matter how it went, blow it away and look to the next one. Thinking of an event as all 18 games with all its points and every game counting towards your final placement is way too much to think about, especially if it's a qualifier. It becomes this big thing that's just overwhelming and breaks your confidence. Instead, separate each game into its own tournament, do your best, leave it behind, and then move on to the next. If you did really well in the last game, of course you want to keep some of that momentum going into the next one, but it can also make you overconfident and fail. If you did badly, it's easy to second guess your decisions and plays, drastically change strategies, and make mistakes in the next game. To avoid this, don't argue about the last game in between games, instead perhaps mention one bad one good thing, talk about it for less than two minutes, then put the game out of your mind and move on. Have a point goal. If you think the cutoff point slash ideal placement point is going to be, say, 90 points, then don't say to yourself you need 90 points in 18 games. Don't even say you need 30 points per day. Your point goal should be between 4 to 6 points per game. Amongst 4 players, that should be easy. Don't use this to pressure yourself if you've only got 2 points in a game, or even 0. The point is not to guilt trip you into you should have done better, etc. The idea is to lessen the burden on your team by saying, we only need 4 points. 4 points is 12th place and a squad wipe. 
Six points is fourth place and two kills. If you do badly, it's easy to double those points in the next game. Each game needs four to six points, no matter what happened in the game before. Completely shut down from the game after the event. If you've had a bad day, it's tempting to play another scrim or to practice so you can be better tomorrow. I disagree with this. If you're a good team but your mindset isn't in the right place, there is no need to practice. No amount of scrims is going to unpressure you tomorrow. If you feel your gun skill was lacking today, take another 30 minutes tomorrow in your warm-up. I would also not encourage VOD review immediately after the day ends. I like my players to take 2-3 to three hours after a tournament and do something else. Ideally eat, go outside, or just hang out and engage with each other outside of the game. Play a different video game or watch a movie together. After that, there can be VOD review for 90 minutes or a couple of hours. After, there should be no discussion of or engaging with the game in any way. Avoid social media. If you're in PMSL, there will be comments about you, and that won't help you. I encourage my players to go to sleep early and spend their first hour of the morning away from the game. Then, another quick meeting before warm-up would be ideal where you set the goals and plan for the day. Then you all head into warm-up where you can take that extra 30 minutes if you want, or not. The priority is feeling refreshed, rested, and reset for the day of the tournament. With these five tips, you can take a seemingly huge event and break it up into more manageable pieces. You'll never be rid of some pressure, that's just what it is to play and to be human. But there are loads of things you can do to reduce the stress and the impact it has. Over time, you'll learn what works best for you, for your team, and for your game. I hope this was helpful. If you want to see more of my tips, then check out my other videos, including this one, which teaches you all about how to use smokes correctly. And don't miss out on my analysis and coaching live streams that happen every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. Let me know what you think of these tips in the comments, and let's discuss! Until then, see you next time!